Hi and welcome to PAIG. For this video, we will look at benchmarking business years for sales and profit. We will look at modeling the data so that we can compare values by creating references to our sales and date table. Both fact tables, however, will share the same dimensions, allowing us to dynamically choose the context for our benchmarking calculations. As always, you can download the solution on GitHub and feel free to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest videos. Let's have a look at how we can accomplish some great dynamic benchmarking reporting. At the end of this tutorial, we'll have the following report. We'll have filters. One is where we can change the dimension or the granularity on which we want to base our calculations on. For example, at the moment we have customer state and then the year with the year we want to compare it with. For example, if we want to compare 2017 to 2019, we have to select 2019 and 2017 here. We have a table with the actual data, with the actual sales data in this case, because we have selected the sales benchmark table. And it will, will show us what the sales target is, which is 10% higher than the previous year. Then we have our sales, and then we have the difference between our sales and our sales target. Then we have the benchmark value, which in this case is the value for 2017. Then we have the difference between the um, between the two values and then between the benchmark values. So for example, if we have our sales data from 2019, we're comparing it with the data from 2017, and this is the difference right here. And then we have our sales growth, calculating the percentage of growth between the two years. On the right, we have something similar we have a bar chart. We are comparing the year-to-date sales values with the year-to-date um, benchmark value. And if we go here and click on profit, we can see that everything has switched to profit. So now we see the same value, uh, the same same calculations, but for the profit amount. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to have a look at the business requirements and define them. So here they are. Um, the first one is that we want a table for the sales and for the profit values. And we want to be able to compare a selected year with another selected year. And we want to see the difference between the two years. The table must allow us to dynamically choose what context we want to calculate our values on. This means that we have to have dynamic dimensions using field parameters. For example, if we want to choose the state, we can choose the state. If we want to choose the product category, we can choose the product category. Then we want a bar chart for profit and a bar chart for sales, showing the sales or profit values for the selected year and the comparison year. Finally, we need a context filter, which allows us to change the dimensions, as I mentioned earlier, and the year filters for the benchmarking. So let's get started by modeling the data. All right, so we are in Power BI, and the first thing we need to do is to model our data. So let's have a look at our model. We have here a basic star schema where we have all our dimensions around the um, sales table. And as you can see, I've already prepared this. I've made the relationship between the date table and the sales table um, inactive. We will see why later. And um, so what we need to do now is we need to go and transform the data. So let's go and open the query editor. And the first thing we want to do is to create a duplicate more or less so a reference it's not really a duplicate but okay and we call this the benchmark table this is the sales table we are creating the reference on and we will do the same thing for the date table so we'll create a reference for the date table and we call this date benchmark perfect so we'll just load the data Okay, perfect. So we have uh, both our tables loaded. So this is the date table. Let's put this next to the date table. And then we have, um, oh, sorry, let's put it over here. And then we have our um, reference to the sales table, which is the benchmark table. And both these fact tables will be sharing all three dimensions, the customer dimension, the store dimension, the product dimension. Um, so let's go ahead and create the relationship. We have the country code, um, which we need as well. So let me have a look at, oh no, sorry, the customer key. Yep, the customer key. So let's go ahead and create the relationship between the customer key, using the customer key, sorry. And then we have our store. So we need our store code. Let's have a look at if we have the store code in here, here the store key, sorry, the store key. So let's as well create that relationship. Perfect. And now finally, we have the product table. So we will need the product key, 
with the product key here. So let's drag that to the product key. Perfect. And now we need an inactive relationship between the, the delivery date and the um, reference to the date table we created earlier. So we need the date and let's have a look where the delivery date is. It's right here. So let's select the delivery date and create that relationship. And let's make sure this relationship is inactive. So let's deactivate it. And that's it. This is the uh, data model we need um, going forward. All right, so the next step is to create a field parameter table. We need this in order to be able to dynamically change between dimensions or filter different columns. Okay, we are back in Power BI, so let's go to modeling and click on new field parameters. And let's name this dimensions and or let's call this granularity actually because I don't know I like granularity and um, let's go ahead and select our dimensions that we want so the first one I would like is the state dimension so let's quickly call this customer state perfect and then something about the product so let's go ahead and add the product category Perhaps um, they want to filter by the product name and see the actual full on details for each product. And then with the, the product sub subcategory. So let's drag this underneath. And that should be fine. That should be enough um, to test the solution out. And we don't want a filter on the page. So let's click create. Perfect. We have our dimensions. So we can already, if we want, add this field to our filter. We should be able to see, perfect, we have customer state, category, subcategory, and product name. And that's it. All right, for the next step, let's add all our measures. Okay, we are back in Power BI, so let's have a look at the measures that we have. Um, we currently in the table have our sales, our sales target, and the difference between our sales and our sales target. And we will slowly add the benchmarking measures, but in order to do so, we first have to add our benchmarking year. So let's go ahead and select this filter and let's go to our benchmarking date table, which is the reference to our date table. And let's add the year that we want. So let's open up the hierarchy and add year. And we should now see that we have a year selected. So let's go ahead and select a year that's a little bit more current. So let's select 2018. We now have our filter set, so that's good. So uh, next step would be to add our measures, but first let's have a look at the measures that we got. So we have our total sales. As you can see, this is a calculate function um, summing the total sales from our sales table, from our primary sales table, and we have the use relationship um, function between the which creates uh, our relation activates our relationship between the delivery date and the actual contoso date table date then we have our target and let's have a look here what we got we got our total sales from the previous year plus 10 percent and then again we have the relationship between the date table and the delivery date so let's have a look at what the previous year has we can see this is just a calculate function with the date add function and which is one year less than whatever has been selected. Then we have our target difference. So this would be the total sales less the actual sales target to see the difference. And I can see that this is right. OK, this is perfect. OK, good. So the next step would be to add our benchmarking measures. Uh, let's have a look at these. So we got our total sales benchmark, which in this case would be 2018. Let's have a look. We got again the same uh, as before, just we the only difference is between this total sales value is that we're using the benchmark table to create the relationship between the date and the delivery date. And um, we're using completely the benchmark. So if I look at the data model again, this is this area we are calculating. However, we can see that we are sharing the dimensions, which we will get to in a second. So let's go back. Let's add the total sales benchmark. And let's format this as well. This is not formatted. So I'm going to go to dollars because I filtered this data to US data. We don't want any, any decimal places. That's good. 
and let's open this up and rename this so that we have some space. Let's add these called sales and let's BM for benchmark just for this video. And perfect, so we have this. And before the sales value, we want our um, our target for the benchmark year. So let's have a look where we got this. We got the total sales benchmark. And one second. Oh no, sorry, for that year, we don't have the, um, the actual sales target. We only have it for the actual primary year that is selected. Okay, so we have the difference. Um, we now have the, sorry, we now have the sales value for the benchmark year. So let's go ahead and add another measure. And this would be our total sales benchmarking. So let's have a look at that formula. This is only the difference between total sales and the total sales benchmark value. And let's quickly format this before we add it to the table. I don't want any decimal places. Let's go ahead and add this. And let's again rename this to be, oops, I want sales delta, and then we simply use a shortcut, um, an abbreviation for benchmarking. So now let's have a look if the value is right. We have a total sales of 458 million um, for the year 2019. In 2018, we had 416 million, and the difference is 142 million. So this is incorrect. Let's have a look why. Oh no, sorry, my bad. I looked at the wrong value. Um, the actual sales is 274 million and the sales in 2018 was 416 million. So we have a difference of 142 million and this is correct. Sorry, this was the sales target I was looking at. So let's have a look at what happens if we select 2017. And we can see that the difference is slightly less. Of course, we're comparing 2019 where the financial crisis hit. So maybe this is not the best year to, to compare. Let's co compare 2018, 2017. And perfect, we can see that we had a sales growth, uh, a, a difference of 58 uh, million. And let's add the total sales growth. And let's format this so that it is a percentage. This is, we are dividing the total sales by the total sales benchmark. We're subtracting one form from the value to get our percentage. We can see it's 26%. I don't want any decimal places. And again, let's rename this so that the, we have more space, sales growth benchmark. Perfect, this looks good. Now, one thing we are missing is our actual context and we created earlier our field parameters. So all we have to do is add this. So let's go uh, to our granularity field parameter table and let's add this to the front. And this looks good. So we can see we have customer state selected. Let's have a look at what happens when we select the uh, product category. And perfect, we can see the values by product category. And at the bottom we have the totals or um, for the entire amount, which is also nice. And then if you want to see actual full on details, we go on product name and you can see now that we have the values for each product. So this is really cool. We can just dynamically change the context on which all our, our calculations are based on. And as because both tables are sharing the, the same dimension, the um, in the, uh, the field parameter dimension that we are selecting. So for example, our, let's go back to the data model. We can see here that we are sharing the customer, the store and the product dimensions. And for the customer, we have the state and then we have some product dimensions we added to the field parameter table. And if we filter by any of them, we can see that we can compare the two because we are mapping onto the same dimension and we can dynamically change the dimension. So this is really powerful again from field parameters. Okay, and for our um, bar chart, let's do the, let's just add our total sales and our total sales benchmark. Let's compare the two and let's have our granularity on the X axis. And this looks good. So let's adjust the colors a little bit. Okay, I decided to go for a dark orange and a light gray. I think this adds a little bit of color to the report and blends in nicely. 
and let's change the dimension again to custom estate so we have a better overview and perfect we can see that the amounts are compared one thing to note um, as a best practice is here we have the value in millions and we can see that even though the numbers are different we are always viewing nine million so one thing that's um, always good to do is to go to our data labels and to actually define our um, units that we have um, in this case, we are changing dimensions, so it's kind of difficult to guess um, if if it is um, valid for the other dimensions as well. Maybe on the other dimensions, the differences are so large. Um, for example, between the states, so uh, b between the the uh, categories. So if we go in category, yeah, we can see that here. The but the values are changing automatically to billions, and this doesn't look good. So. Perhaps an option would be to have none, to have the actual value, so that when we go on state, uh, we can see the actual values for our state. And of course, the compared values don't fit, so one would have to do a mouse over. You can add a dynamic tooltip if you want to this. I have a video based on that as well. Um, but for now, we're just going to keep it this way. All right, and now we're going to do the same thing for the profit measures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my selection pane and I'm going to select everything that I want to show when the profit benchmark is selected. And I want these both buttons to sync later on to go to the same bookmark because I don't want um, sales to be compared to profit between the two different visuals because that would be kind of useless so let's have a look at what we got we got the profit bar selected button which i want in this case i want to show the unselected button for the sales bar and i want to hide the profit and the sales unselected button and then again selected bar sales and selected table sales i want to hide them so okay this looks good i can now see that i have my profit benchmark buttons popping up now i need to do the same for the visuals so let's go ahead and get rid of the sales bar chart and let's add the profit bar chart let's get rid of the sales table and add the profit table okay perfect and now we're going to do the same thing that we did for the sales values but for the profit all right, and as you can see, I just added all of the fields that we need for the profit. So we have our profit target, our profit amount, and the difference between the profit and the profit target. Then we have the benchmark value for the profit. So the, now we have the 2017 value right here, and here we have the 2018 value. Then we have the difference between the two profit amounts, and then we have the growth between the two years in the profit amount. And we can see that the total amount has been a growth by 26%. If we select 2019 here, where financial crisis hit, we can see that our profit amount went down by 16% if we compare the two years. If we want to compare 2014 to 2019, no problem. We can see that still we are 14% down. And if we compare 2018 with 2014, we can see we have a growth between the four years of 30% in our profit. So this is pretty neat. All right, our next and final step is to add our bookmarks so that the, we make the report interactive and to test our solution and have a look at what we got. Okay, we're in Power BI again, and this is our final step. So currently we have all our profit buttons um, selected viewing and our profit table and our profit um, bar chart. So let's just add a bookmark and call this profit. And let's make sure that we unselect the data because we don't want the data to be carried um, to be to be uh, reset um, to the book to, to the time we had the bookmark selected uh, created. So um, this would because this would t terrible for users if if they are changing something and then they click on a bookmark and then all the data changes because um, we forgot to to unselect the data. Um, in this case for the bookmark all right and the next step would be to do um, the same for the sales so let's just select everything we want for the sales so we've got our buttons and now we have to show the sales bar chart hide the profit do the same thing for the table and this would be our sales bookmark and let's again get rid of the data okay perfect let's close this up 
and let's test the solutions. So we have currently customer state compared 2018 with 2014. Let's see what happens if we go to profit. We click on profit, we got nothing because I forgot something. We need to create the actions. So um, let's go ahead, whoops, my bad. Let's go ahead to the action and bookmark and let's select the profit bookmark and let's do the same thing for this button on the right profit and let's click on profit okay perfect this looks good and let's do the same thing for the sales button let's select the sales bookmark for each of the sales button and let's test it out and switch between the two we should see one we should see sales and on the other one we should see profit and this looks pretty nice let's have a look at what happens when we go to subcategory Okay, this looks good as well. We can see the subcategories right here. And let's see if we want to compare 2012 with 2018. We got a growth of 220%, that's nice. Let's have a look at the customer state. And this looks good. Um, this is a very nice solution. We are benchmarking. This is um, the performance is quite good. I don't know how the performance is if you scale this. I haven't tested it on a, on a large data set. Um, but this looks pretty good to me. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And please subscribe to stay up to date with the latest videos.